A few months back, I ranked the 10 best upcoming indie 3D platformers. I'll take any excuse to fawn over this genre all day, so I did a lot of research to make sure I didn't miss anything. But being one man with limited resources, time, knowledge, and talent, some important stuff was lost on me, like a beautiful game called Pumpkin Jack, which should have made the list. My other, more embarrassing blunder was a game I ranked at number two that's, well, it's not cancelled per se, its developer just no longer exists. This game got a demo on Steam for which I had nothing but good things to say. The platforming was fast and fluid with an emphasis on speed, it looked great, ran well, had a cool concept, and checked all my boxes, something nobody ever wants to do. But while I was smiling from ear to ear like an idiot extolling this thing's virtues, the warning signs flew over my head. There was almost no information available about this game besides what was in the demo, which by then was pretty old, and the developers themselves were quiet. A few other games on that list could say they had demos though. With a release date set for 2022, a long wait for sure, but a realistic goal, and a promising team behind it, the future looked bright. Until somebody turned the lights out. Today, the studio is no more. Its developers have all gone their separate ways. The game is dead, Jim. Its demo left on Steam to tease exciting possibilities that will never be. This is the story of Captain's Tale, its creators, and why you'll never get to play it. The game Captain's Tale, not the creators. I... whatever. <laughs> Captain's Tale began life as Land of the Scurvy Dog, a university project by seven students at Kayani University of Applied Sciences in 2016. Those students were, and I'm going to butcher all of these since I couldn't find pronunciations for most of them, Serafima Jokinen as CEO and producer, Tony Altinen, lead designer, Marcus Haivarinen, lead producer, Antti Roshkunen, technical artist, Yohu Pirtioha, as programmer, and Susanna Rayunio as another artist. Helmi Kinunen was also on the project at some point as promotional artist, but he seems to have left the studio early on as he's not mentioned on their website. I'm sorry to all those developers and to all Finnish people the world over. Back then, this was a prototype they made for a university assignment. They put it on Itch.io, still under that original name, in December 2016. They also uploaded another game called Insatiable, a 3D bullet hell shooter. Land of the Scurvy Dog is just one level, which took me about 10 minutes to complete on my first playthrough, and shows some basic concepts of 3D platformer design. The protagonist is a cute little doggo with an eye patch and sword, and you can swap between a two-legged mode to a attack and double jump, or four-legged mode to run faster and jump higher and further. The level starts in a narrow corridor, almost like Crash Bandicoot, and while it opens up a little, the level is tight and focused. Crash seems to be the main inspiration for this demo, with these turtle enemies that walk back and forth and don't respond to you, and a switch to a 2D perspective as you climb up a waterfall. It's a lot faster than Crash though, especially with that ability to run on all fours. There are some smart design choices here, chief amongst them the level design. There are collectibles, dog bones of course, leading you where you need to go, but also hinting at secret areas with a bigger collectible in them, a giant golden dog bone, without making it too obvious where they are. You're forced to swap between running on all fours and two-legged mode, which is a really silly thing to call it, to attack enemies, then make a long jump, then do precise double jumping, then back down again to run across a collapsing bridge. It's nice to see both modes being useful, but it also feels kind of clunky having to press a button to swap between them all the time. It's important to remember that this is a homework assignment by students who are still learning and probably weren't given a whole lot of time either. The physics don't always feel as responsive as they should, and the camera is far too heavy and slow. And this is more annoying than anything, but the music consists of one 30 second loop on repeat. You can say it's rough around the edges, but there's potential here. I've played way worse than this by a long shot. And that potential panned out. In 2017, the group came together again, and Biting Mascot was born. The first game would take their scurvy dog, give him a bath and a few belly rubs, and reintroduce him to the world as Captain's Tail. It didn't take long for them to have something to show, as in April of that year, a three-level demo for Captain's Tail hit Steam. And what a fantastic demo it is. Playing these two back-to-back -back shows how much this team grew, and what they could accomplish with more time. Every aspect of Captain's Tale is an improvement over Land of the Scurvy Dog. The graphics, character designs, physics, camera, level layout, music, everything is more polished, and there's much more to do. Running on all fours is no longer a toggle, it's mapped as a sprint button now. They've gotten rid of the sword, so you instead attack with this spin move, which is much more responsive. The controls and jumping feel quicker and not as heavy, same with the camera, there are more enemy designs, 
designs and they react to you rather than moving on a preset path. They cut the 2D sections and added in both a wall run and coconut throwing mechanic to add more depth. And it's a huge relief to hear a different, longer track for each of the three levels. The key to Captain's Tail is its speed. You can get a good head of steam going by holding down sprint and just gunning it. Levels are built with that in mind, offering multiple routes and secret areas hiding golden dog bones. Run along the beach, blow past some enemies, or avoid them by scampering up the wall, jump off onto a platform then to another wall, land behind everything and just keep zooming off. A small speedrunning community spawned around this demo when it first came out, with people putting up some insane times on YouTube. I clearly am not one of those people. The only thing we're missing is a story. The Steam description says you play as Dash, a cordy with a chip on his shoulder, and a desire to become the fluffiest captain on the seven seas. And that's all we know. There's this bird that follows you around everywhere, but it doesn't seem to do anything. Maybe it's there for story reasons, maybe it would have played a role in the gameplay later on, I don't know. After first playing the demo, my mind was racing with gameplay and story possibilities. Imagine if we could travel on a ship and go to different small islands, assassins Creed style, or round up a crew and attack other ships, or have complex one-on-one -on -one sword fights, or being able to climb into a cannon and blasting yourself up to places you wouldn't otherwise be able to reach. I had big hopes for Captain's Tale, but like all my other dreams, they were crushed when faced with cold hard reality. The first warning sign was that Biting Mascot kind of vanished off the face of the earth. There were never any posts from them on the Steam page, no tweets or booked faces since November 2018, and no activity on their Itch.io profile since releasing Insatiable in May the year before that. The real kicker though is when you check out their website, or try to check it out, you'll find that it no longer exists. According to Domain Tools, the domain is unregistered and is available for sale. So I decided to put on my old, dusty, neglected games journalist hat and tried to reach out to the folks for some answers. I was able to find contact information for just three of the developers. Still, I sent out emails to those I could, hoping to get some closure, but none of them responded. It turns out no one wants to talk to a YouTuber with a thousand or so subscribers. Who would have guessed? I was able to find Tony Altonen's personal website, though, which settled the matter for good. I worked at Biting Mascot as a lead designer for slightly over a year, his bio reads, and then we all decided we want to see what other opportunities there were out there. After that, I found LinkedIn pages for everyone involved at the studio and, yeah, I got that more or less confirmed. They all had already left and got new jobs. Tony Altonen now works for House Marquis, Marcus Hyvarinen, and Yuho Pirtajo. I think I made him Spanish, or tried to. They're both at Next Games. Antti Rushkanen is at Rightware. Helmi Kuninen hangs out at Team Grappling Hook. Serafima Jokinen is a freelance writer and illustrator. And Susanna Rayunio doesn't seem to be in the business anymore, as far as I can tell. I can't say for certain when Captain's Tale was canned, or when the studio shut down, or why, obviously. Biting Mascot social media accounts continued until November 2018, a year after the demo released. But their last blog post from their site came in April 2018, a post from Altenen titled The Importance of Other Crafts as a Game Designer. Speaking of this blog, there's a lot in it about game development theory, offering a lot of great advice for indie developers just starting out. There are posts on how to market your game, creating lovable characters, fostering communication amongst a team of people with different disciplines, stuff like that. A lot of the blogs seem to have disappeared with the site, but you can still read some of them by using the Wayback Machine. I'll include a link in the description if you want to check those out. Whatever happened behind closed doors at Biting Mascot, we'll probably never know. One thing is certain though, Captain's Tale is dead. It's a shame we'll never get to see what that final game could have been, where that potential could have led. There was a lot of talent on this team, the fact that almost everyone was able to get good jobs so quickly after dissolving is testament to that. Captain's Tale may be gone, but it served its purpose. It was a student project at a university that bloomed into something more. It got everyone who worked on it employed, and that's more important than the limited audience it likely would have gotten, having a cool new game to play for a couple of hours. The fact of the matter is that everyone on the team is now working stable, financially secure jobs, something they wouldn't be able to say if they kept making Captain's Tale independently. The indie gaming scene is not for everyone. It's oversaturated right now, and there's a good chance that even if they did finish the game, it would have been completely missed and overlooked, no matter how good it is. This isn't an industry for everyone, and if they felt it wasn't for them, and they prefer 
were more steady work, then I salute them for having the courage and conviction to follow through on that, and for getting work so fast. Hell, I'm jealous of them for that. I would have liked to have beefed this video up with some interviews, or at least statements shedding some light on what happened with biting mascots, how far long Captain's Tale development got, and if there's any chance it'll ever get finished, but you can't win them all. I'm no Jason Schreier, clearly, though if you are one of the people who worked at Biting Mascot and would like to speak, feel free to give me a shout. At least we got that demo though, and that's more that can be said of a lot of dead indie games. Let's enjoy it while we can. I really wish I got to talk to the developers about what happened and what their plans for the games were, but we'll likely never know what happened. Oh well, that's just how it goes sometimes. If you liked that video, despite how boring it was, why not like and subscribe for more, and I'll see you next time.